All right, guys, today what I'm going to teach you is how you can beat the algos simply by understanding what an algo does. And this, I think, is one of the first things that gets people in trouble is the first assumption that many people have regarding algos is that they are some kind of smart bots that can beat you at everything and they're faster than you, they make decisions better than you, they're more emotionless, etc., etc., etc. But the basics of an algorithm is just a simple set of rules. And that's the bit that you've got to remember that yes, they might be able to execute quicker. Yes, they've got faster routes to the exchange than you have, but you're not playing that game anyway. And so the way that you're going to beat an algorithm is by understanding what exactly an algorithm does, how they work and how that then creates opportunity. That's the way that you need to approach it. So work out what they do and then try and beat them at their own game or work out what their weaknesses are and beat them at those things. Now, a lot of the things that algos do don't seem like much of a weakness. Because it's a simple set of rules, they work off statistical norms. And that's one of the key weaknesses here. The statistical norms generally will hold, but when they don't, the algo can't interpret that and they can't see the change that's happening there. The other thing that algorithms do is they will execute completely emotionless and in a kind of arbitrary way, you know, the rule says do this, so they will do it. And that's one of the other weaknesses with an algo as well. Now, where they do have an advantage and where you have to appreciate that you can't beat an algo is their ability to instantly react to data. So if you see, if you're, if you're looking for a higher number on any piece of data, you're your action if you will is you read that higher number you interpret that based on a plan that that is that means market should go up then you have to move your mouse then click then the order goes to the exchange and you get filled there's a lot of steps there the algorithm does that instantly so you can't win at that game but what you can win at is understand what else they're going to do once they're in that position because once they're in the position they obviously need to get out and this then changes. This is then what leads you to an opportunity in understanding the speed with which they're going to get in and also then what they're going to do to get out. And that's one of just a few ways that they do it. And I'll show you in a moment another version of this where you have to consider what a statistical mean reverting algorithm does. Now, there's millions of different algorithms out there and they will all do certain different things. But in understanding the basics of what certain algorithms will do, you can understand where there's opportunity with these. So if you take the basic idea of a mean reverting algorithm, what their their assessment is and the, the algorithm setup is, is essentially if you see a move of X distance over a certain period of time, you go against the move because that is outside of the norm and therefore is unlikely to stay there at any point in time. And that's the kind of very basic assumption. Now, of course, there's going to be much more nuanced algorithms that don't fall foul of this rule, but you have to work with what you can understand as the basic mechanics of what they're going to do. So let's go and have a little look at an example. Right. <clears throat> so how do you beat an algorithm? What you've got to do is you've got to work out when you've got an edge over the algo. And this will comes down to, like I said, understanding their actions, understanding what they're going to do in certain situations. So I'll explain that little kind of picture there in just a moment. One of the other greatest opportunities that you have as well is algorithms can't trade on non-binary events. I'm sure over time that this may well change and then we'll have to find a new way of beating them. It's all about adapting. But with a non-binary event, i.e. an event where there is a kind of gray scale of what the meaning of that event is. An algorithm can't interpret that. So for example, if it is a change in wording or you're listening to a press conference and the tone of the press conference changes, an algorithm can't understand that better than a person because they don't have that emotional ability to understand the implication of somebody's shift in tone or shift in the specific words that they're using. But in this example, what I want to look at is the basic idea of a mean reversion trade. Now, the simple idea of a mean reversion trade, if you're in a simple, stable market, market's not doing a great deal, it has a certain amount of velocity, it's not moving up and down very quickly, it's moving within a reasonably small range. If suddenly 
you get a large movement out of that range. Market moves very, very quickly, covers a huge amount of distance. You know, think triple, quadruple the width of that range. That's going to be seen as essentially outside of normal conditions and therefore brings in those, those algorithms that fade those types of moves, that play the mean reversion, that play the move back to norm. Now, this is where you get a great deal of advantage because if this is a move that you can understand can continue, i.e. it is a break of a clear level, it is created on the back of a piece of news coming out or a new piece of information. Well, what you understand is that this is a move that's not going to mean revert. And in fact, now is the opportunity for a larger move. And this is where you beat them. That what those algorithms do is as it jumps, they sell. They try and get short for the market to flick back on the basis that it shouldn't be up there. This provides you your opportunity to get in. So rather than thinking, oh no, they're going to take away my opportunity or if, you know, if I jump in, they're going to push the market back on me. Look at it from the other perspective that they're now giving you the opportunity to get in on a pullback before the next leg of the move. And not only that, and this is where you get the kind of sense of satisfaction as well from beating the algos, is as the move then continues, because you understand the reasoning why that will happen, all of those mean reversion strategies get destroyed. And going back to what an algo does, they are completely emotionless in what they do. So the moment that it's going wrong, the setup says, if this happens, you have to get out. And that will then force them out. And in doing so, they're then getting out into a market that is already running higher. So there's lower liquidity for them to buy. Market runs away from them to the upside. They then, in fact, not only give you the opportunity to get in on the pullback that they have effectively mistakenly sold, but on top of that, they also help push your move on side by themselves getting out and taking their losses. Now, of course, the algorithm doesn't care. It's emotionless. It's completely arbitrary in what it does. But you care a great deal. And it's about the understanding of what that the algorithm does that allows you to get into these trades. So it's about that understanding. If you understand what somebody else's edges and you understand what their effective weaknesses are, that's how you beat somebody. You don't beat people by trying to be better at what they do and trying to play a game that you essentially can't win, so the speed game. But what you can do is you can understand where they get things wrong and you can take advantage of that. And not only can you take advantage of it, you actually get a greater advantage by them then pushing you further on side. So that's how you can beat the algos. It's all about understanding what they do. It's all about understanding how you can use that to your advantage in your own trading. If you love this video, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, click on the notifications. You'll get lots more videos like this in the future. We'll see you next time.